our administration's highest priority is keeping our residents safe. And all of the actions that we're taking will allow all levels of government to better collaborate and to respond to this threat in a coordinated and effective manner. While today's news um, may seem overwhelming, uh, this is not a reason to panic. Uh, Marylanders should go to work or go to school just as they normally do. Uh, at the same time, I want to continue to remind everyone to prepare themselves and to continue to stay informed. Um, as the CDC warned last week, local schools and daycares uh, should be prepared with contingency plans for potential long-term closures. Local communities and cities should be prepared to modify or postpone or cancel mass gatherings. And local businesses should be ready for office closures that require uh, their employees to work from home. And these are the kinds of things that people should continue to plan for. And we will continue to track this rapidly evolving situation. And we will be uh, receiving almost constant up to the minute information. The public should be assured that our state's preparedness builds on decades of planning, experience, and expertise gained from previous and ongoing public health events. And we're very fortunate that Maryland has some of the top health research facilities in the world. And I'm confident in our state's ability to respond effectively uh, to these cases of coronavirus, as well as any uh, future cases, and also to be a national leader in responding to this situation and potentially in developing treatments and perhaps even a vaccine. Uh, we will continue to update our citizens as the situation develops. Um, all of the latest information can be found by visiting health.maryland.gov slash coronavirus. Residents can also dial 211 uh, to connect with a helpline representative to get information and community resources for the coronavirus. Now, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the Deputy Secretary uh, for Public Health Services, Fran Phillips, who will provide you with some further details. Fran? Thank you, Governor. Uh, and um, just to echo the governor's remarks, uh, this development today, the uh, confirmation of three positive cases of the coronavirus here in Maryland is not an unexpected event. We have been preparing for this event uh, with many, many partners across the state. Uh, we have been uh, watching very closely, and as it happens, these three individuals had specimens that were run in our lab, and so you know that our Maryland Public Health Lab here in Baltimore was, um, was uh, brought up into operation earlier this week. And so these are individuals that, as the governor said, had an exposure in the course of international travel, returned home to Maryland, and when they were notified that they had a possibility of exposure, they were brought to a hospital. Actually, they brought themselves to a hospital because they are not severely ill. They were not hospitalized. They stayed at home and brought themselves to a hospital in order to be tested, in order to have those specimens collected and sent to the Baltimore lab. The results came out this afternoon, and uh, what is happening right now is a very, very thorough investigation using public health resources in consultation with the federal government, the CDC, with the state of Maryland, as well as with Montgomery County Health Department. And this is very important because we want to understand all of the activity, all of the um, uh, comings and goings of these three individuals who are at home, they have remained at home, and they've been extraordinarily cooperative. We want to understand during the period of time when they returned from travel and when they had symptoms, uh, of flu-like symptoms, we want to understand exactly where they went, who they interacted with, in order that we can conduct this investigation.
We have tremendous support, as I said, from the CDC as well as from Montgomery County. Uh, a very specialized team of disease investigators are working in Montgomery County with these individuals. And uh, we will expect to have more details um, tomorrow as the investigation progresses. I'm pleased to say that these individuals are uh, very cooperative. They are, uh, their symptoms are abating. Uh, it is a couple, a man and a woman, and another person who is unrelated. So they live in two different households. They are, as I said, cooperative. They are in isolation now. They are not leaving their homes, and we are in uh, very frequent contact with them. Um, I will stop at this point and be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Right, so they returned back to their home in homes, I should say, in Montgomery County late in February from international travel. And so we were notified through the CDC of the fact that they may have been exposed in their trip. And so when we learned that information, we immediately at the State Health Department reached out to these individuals, um, asked them to, uh, to come in and to be tested. And, and so the international travel was the, um, um, was the occurrence that caused their exposure. And I think that that's important to point out. Um, unlike other states, so far, this is not cases of community transmission here in Maryland. Now, that's not to say that we uh, will not have that occur, but at, that, at this point, these are travel-related um, cases rather than uh, community-acquired. Right, thank you for that. Uh, we do know where they came from, and we're not going to release that information on the interest of confidentiality. So we want to uh, respect that for these individuals who have been very cooperative as far as the particular details of their travel. Uh, as I mentioned, the investigation is exactly that, to understand what kinds of associations they had with people, what kind of contact. Was it casual contact? Was it close contact? Generally, the, the indication is about six feet in, um, in distance for kind of public contacts, but we want to understand other family members that may have visited, and all of that is work that's going on right now as we speak in order to develop a ring of contacts that we will then spread out um, through our public health workforce. Thank you. Right, so the, as I said, it's a couple, um, a man and a woman, and the other individual is not related to them, but they were on a similar trip together, so, so that it was, a, it was a group that came back at the same time. So they were same trip together. Right, same trip together. together Correct. But they're not related. Correct, other than the couple. So it's one single person and then a, a couple. Can you tell us what this continent that this trip is on? Uh, what continent? I can't do that, no. Thank you. Yeah. It's, not, it's not relevant, right? Uh, the single person is a female. Single person is a female in her 50s, and the uh, married couple are older. It's 70-year-olds. Uh, Do any of them have any underlying medical conditions like a compromised immune system or cardiovascular system that would cause this to be more problematic, or are they back on the next one within a week? Well, we don't know their medical history at this point. We will be uh, investigating that. Um, Fortunately, they were, uh, I would say, mild to moderately ill, so they were not hospitalized. And as a result, I can say that their uh, symptoms are abating at this point. Can you say if they came through an airport or a, a cruise? Where did they, how did they come back? Um, we don't have exactly the information on their travel, um, all of the conveyances that brought them from overseas back home to Montgomery County, so I really can't answer that in great detail. Did they fly through an airport in our area? In, in I, I can't answer that at this point. Can you talk about how you're tracking international travelers? I think earlier today that you, you said that you're monitoring some 300 plus people by phone who are right. asymptomatic. Right. Can you talk about that? Sure, sure. That's, that's an effort that's been going on for about two weeks now. That started when um, the Americans were asked to come back from China. And um, they came back through three so-called funneling airports. 
uh, the federal government in those airports notified the state health departments of people returning from China um, back to our jurisdictions. They did airport screens at that time, fever checks and whatnot. So people that were asymptomatic as on their arrival were sent home, asked to stay home for 14 days. We got those names and we do monitoring. We do phone check-in with those individuals. Now it's gone beyond China. It's to include Italy. It's to include Iran. It's to include uh, South Korea. So, so those counts, those, those counts of people that we are doing the phone monitoring on um, has been, uh, I guess, underway for about two weeks now. And are you expanding testing? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that was another development. Uh, yesterday, we have uh, new guidance from the CDC. You know, there's been criteria that have slowly been liberalized um, or relaxed, I should say, in terms of what kinds of risks would be qualified to be tested. And so just yesterday, the CDC took another step to expand somewhat those, those uh, criteria. And so we here in Maryland are applying that same criteria and, and informing all of the clinicians, about 3,800 clinicians, licensed physicians, nurse practitioners, and physicians assistants of this new guidance um, through email so that they'll be aware of, of testing. We are we're very relieved now that we have testing here in Maryland because it means that the turnaround time is so much quicker and people who have pending tests are asked, of course, to stay home until we get the results of the test. So this compresses the amount of time of that disruption, disruption for them. Can we clarify? the timeline, so they came back, you said they went to the hospital, they went home, can we just clarify a little bit of Sure, we got information uh, about these individuals on, on um, uh, we, we know that they returned to uh, Maryland on February 20th. We got information about their, uh, their situation on March 3rd in the evening. We contacted them in the morning, <coughs> excuse me, on March 4th. And, um, and collected uh, specimens at that time, and were able to turn around the test results today. So were you um, managing on which hospital or hospitals they went to, and can you tell us which one? I do know which hospital, and it's one hospital, and no, no, I will not um, release that at this point. They, they came in uh, in, in uh, protective uh, uh, precautions. They came into the emergency room simply for uh, the collection of those specimens, and then they were released. So. Um, so that was a very uh, good service that the hospital provided, not only to collect the specimens, careful packaging, and get them to the lab through courier right away. And so you know, how much in the school superintendent contacting the school superintendent? Have they been in contact with um, some students from your district? We don't have indication of that, and that's really a matter of protocol, so that we want to make sure that local officials, whether that's the school superintendent, certainly the elected officials, the health uh, the health officer, as well as the emergency management um, officials would know about such an instance. So that was a matter of protocol just for ad advisory purposes. We don't have any information about any of these individuals having contact with uh, Montgomery County schools or school-aged children at this point. So is anyone else in quarantine as a result of these results? Not at this point in time. Are they self-quarantined or are they quarantined in medical facilities? They're at home. They're at home. Yes. So that's 12 days. Correct. Uh, I'm sure that the very first question that you've been asking them is, in that 12-day period, where were they where there were large groups of people or in which they were interacting with the people they got into that six-foot radius? Do you have a sense, and have you pinpointed those, those places or days of interacting with the public? No, this is, very, this is very new. But you're exactly right. That's exactly the kind of questions that we want to ask. Um, asking people to go back to on their calendars day by day and retrace their lives um, in great detail. Um, and so that's exactly what's happening now. We don't have indications right now of, of other groups or, or other locations that we need to focus on. But we expect to get that very quickly. So that work is, is carrying on as we speak. Are you saying that they didn't interact with anyone at the hospital that they went to and they didn't have the specimens collected? Oh, yes, they did. The hospital was aware in advance. We called ahead to make sure that they were aware that they were coming, and they were received by the hospital with staff that was fully protected in personal protective equipment. Um, so that was, uh, and, and actually that, that's a really good question because um, that brings up the question of how people should um, respond if they themselves have symptoms and, and, are, and are concerned. And so that opens up a lot of questions, and I, I would like to give a little, a little help on that. Um, people are worried, of course, this is flu season, and people hearing this news may be worried about their own symptoms. Um, and that's legitimate to do. 
um, people that have um, symptoms such as a high fever or, or a fever of 100 and 100.4 with a cough and difficulty breathing, those are some of the symptoms of this new coronavirus disease. People that have those symptoms really should think about their own underlying conditions if they have medical conditions. People that are older and are, are experiencing those conditions should call their health care provider call and get some advice. Uh, if, you, if the decision is made to, for you to come in, go in carefully, but call ahead. Have people know that you're coming so you can protect the healthcare providers as well as others in the waiting room. Well, the hospital was fully prepared for the entry of these patients. And so it's really a matter for the hospital to be able to look carefully at the, at the procedures. And the hospital has asked, and we are, we are, it is not uh, germane to the investigation. We know that that hospital was protected and um, have great confidence in their ability to manage that specimen. Absolutely, they called it. We, yes, we did, yes. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the staff knew. We wanted to make sure that we had the entrance that was secured um, as far as how the patients would arrive and that all of the test equipment was available. Last question, please. Was this when they did the test or was this when they initially went to the hospital for the first time and said they were feeling well? Or did they go to the hospital initially? No, this was for the, for the test. 